Hi, I'm Ezra. I'm Andy. I'm Alex. And I'm Maggie. And we're doing the first three questions. Question one. How can the era 1824 through 1840 be considered the era of the common man? The era of 1824 through 1840 is considered the era of the common man because of the major decline in aristocracy. Andrew Jackson, president from 1829 to 1837, was born a common man, and because of his background, he majorly affected the way of the government. This began with the idea of universal male su white suffrage. This made sure that all men, no matter their status, property, or income, could vote, creating a larger voter turnout. Jackson's form of leadership was very different from the former Jeffersonian principles, where only the rich and elite were allowed to vote and rule. Jackson also ended the Bank of the U.S. and its control over the credits as a result of the upset caused by the ba Panic of 1819. This nationwide panic greatly affected the working and lower classes, and Jackson felt a need to help his people. Jackson's support came mainly from the farmers and lower class, so the Missouri Compromise, bringing in many frontier men and Westerners, helped him gain voters in Congress. While many supported Jackson's ideas, no strict classes system, and the fact that the common man now had the right to vote uh, without the distinction of owning land, Davy Crockett did not. As soon as he was elected to the U.S. Congress, he opposed many of the policies of President Andrew Jackson, especially the Indian Removal Act. Voter rights and presidential election results were also skewed during this time period due to the apparent corrupt bargain uh, during the presidential election of 1824 and Andrew Jackson's presidential campaign itself. The corrupt bargain in which the House elected John Quincy Adams over his rival Andrew Jackson occurred when the Speaker of the House, Henry Clay, convinced the House to elect Adams. Later, Adams made Henry, Henry Clay his Secretary of State relating to the lack of aristocracy during the era of the common man. Andrew Jackson's presidential campaign is equally relevant during this period due to the dirtiness and vulgarity of his language and accusation, accusations such as adultery rumors during the uh, election of 1828, Jackson versus Adams. Our second question was, what was the corrupt bargain of 1824? How did it aggravate Americans who were fed up with the advantages of the old money and aristocracy? So the corrupt bargain of 1824 was a controversial event that occurred during the election of 1824. And during the election of 1824, the most popular candidates were Andrew Jackson, John Kinsey Adams, and Henry Clay. Despite Andrew Jackson's fame as a war hero, after he won many battles for America in the War of 1812, there was no, nobody received a majority vote in the Electoral co College which led to a deadlock of Andrew Jackson versus John Quincy Adams. And in a deadlock, the House of Rep Representatives had to break it, and Clay, who was eliminated, disliked Jackson and favored Adams over him. So Clay was also the Speaker of the House and had lots of power in the House. And in the end, Adams won the election, and Clay was appointed as the Secretary of State. Jackson supporters were furious due to the election's results, and despite a lack of evidence, many suspicions arose among Americans, and throughout the presidency, Adams was attacked by the public. Americans were aggravated due to this event, and this marked a turning point in America as it influenced more people to vote and voice their opinions. Okay, so our third and final question is, how was John Quincy Adams a nationalist in the time of the decline of nationalism? So with this one, there's four supporting details that are really important to understand. The first is infrastructure. The second is the National Observatory. Third is education. And the fourth is Native Americans. And this is all within the time period of 1824 to 1840. And some backstory on this time, Overall, in the government and generally across the United States, there was a large decline in nationalism and many people were moving towards state rights. 
So John Quincy Adams had a political view that was very isolated from the rest of the U.S. So first off, John Quincy Adams urged Congress to improve construction of roads and canals. He was very big on improving public infrastructure across the United States. Additionally, he also wanted uh, federal support for an astronomical observatory, and this policy in particular was not popular at all, especially the South was very against this, as it meant that a lot of the taxpayer money would have to go to a project that wasn't directly benefiting their lives or the U.S.'s national interests. In addition, John Quincy Adams also renewed George Washington's proposal for a national university. He thought that education was very critical, and that's why he was very adamant about this policy. And last but not least, Adams wanted to have a peaceful and fair agreement with the Cherokee Indians in Georgia, and um, the white uh, citizens of Georgia was very against this. They actually threatened to take up arms. So in the end, um, Adams did not actually have this peaceful and fair agreement, and pretty much the entire South ignored all these policies that he tried to propose. This is the end. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed.